Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer Man's Noble Beer Views. Um, today I have another beer from High Branch Brewing Company out of Concord, North Carolina. Um, this is another beer in their uh, Barrel Age Saison Hill series. Um, I've done Norway Hill, which is the base beer, and I've done Cherry Hill, which is of course that with cherries. Um, this is Peach Hill. I'm sure you can guess what this is. It's that same base Barrel Age Saison uh, this it's with second use peaches, um, so not. Uh, I don't think it's going to be super peach forward. Um, I'm not really sure though. I have not had this before. I've, I didn't when they released these bottles. I didn't get to try it on tap, so it's the first time having it. Pretty excited for it. Um, like the other ones, it's uh, same ABV, six point seven, and yeah, that's about it. So crack it open and see what we got here. It's a big time hiss but I don't see that it's uh, trying to gush out of here or anything so that's a good sign Oops. man it's really flopping out of there um, <clears throat> see it pours a somewhat cloudy uh, straw color not uh, not like hazy by any means, but not completely uh, transparent either. About slightly less than a finger's worth of um, white head. It almost looks like uh, the head on a pale lager or, uh, you know, a lot of times with these uh, wild ales, the head is usually, um, so if it's just brett, it's usually like very rocky. If it's just, uh, if it's more, if it's mixed culture where there's like lacto in it, usually it, uh, a lot of times they're very carbonated too, and all the carbonic acid just wipes the uh, the head away. So there'll be a lot at first, and then it fizzles down really quickly. This, you know, you can see it's sticking around, which uh, I could tell while I was pouring it that this wasn't super carbonated. You know, I poured it, I started pouring it somewhat vigorously halfway through just to get ahead on it. But that seems to be the case with a lot of their um, wild ales. I'm guessing that's just the way TJ likes them. <coughs> Um, so I definitely get some, uh, some peach character in it. It's definitely a lot more, like, earthy skin than, like, that bright, fresh, like, ripe, ripe, um, pulp. Uh, definitely some, uh, like, oaky barrel character, uh, I do pick up a little bit of, like, Brett Funk, too, which was, you know, present in the other two as well. I don't know. It smells pretty good. I'm excited. <clears throat> so I will say there, I think there's less peach in the flavor than there is in the aroma. Um... Which is usually the case with peach beers for whatever reason. I don't know why. Usually you can pick it out. It could just be sometimes that uh, the yeast itself produces like a peachy note. But it's usually not something you taste from the yeast either. Um, this one seems to be a little more... Uh, a little more tart than the other two. Which is interesting because... I understand why it might be a little more tart than the base beer, but I think it's strange that it's more tart than the cherry one because at least I'm perceiving it that way. Um, just because naturally, you know, cherries usually, unless you're using like sweet cherries, but I think usually in, in wild ales, um, most breweries use sour cherries. Um, usually cherries are much more tart than peaches are. I mean, peaches are usually not very tart at all. They're usually pretty sweet. Um... So, it is interesting. So, even though I'm sure this was the same recipe, I'm guessing it's probably not the same actual base. You know, it's probably rebrewed each time to do these because this didn't come out. It was several months between this one and the cherry one, and I don't know that this one would happen to be aged longer or anything. It's probably the beer itself is probably a different bait, like different brew of the same recipe so that would make sense why you know the acidity could be different because obviously the bugs aren't going to do the same thing every time i 
It has a little bit of um of that leathery character that you get um from nice uh nice wild ales. Um it does have a really a really small amount of um uh, like graininess, uh bready malt on the back end too. It's funny, every time I go in for a sip, I smell the peach, but then the taste is like, it's there, but it's very muted. I mean, to be honest, if I, I would probably guess it from the smell, but if I tasted this blind, I don't think I would guess that there's peaches in it. I would probably just think it's, you know, a mild um, stone fruit character. There's something coming from the yeast, which happens with things without peaches in it. Um... But overall, it's it's really nice. Um, this one is a little more carbonated than the um, the regular one or the cherry one was. And that might be why I'm perceiving it as more tart too, because it might just be a little bit more like carbonic acid stinging the tongue. I'm really not sure. Um, it's a little. I would say compared to like the top beers in this style, it is definitely lacking some complexity. Um, but in that in that sense it makes it less good it doesn't make it bad at all there's a lot of good things going on here it's just not at that that top level but it's also priced um a lot more reasonable than most of those two so uh <clears throat> i feel like you have to take that into account when it comes to these types of beers some beers i don't take that into account as much but Bear, like wild ales, the prices for these things are all over the place. I mean, you have Hill Farmstead selling non barrel aged ones for 10 bucks to 750 which are almost as good as the barrel aged ones, but then they're selling some of the barrel aged ones for $50. Um, you know, so the prices for these things are literally all over the place. Um, but I think this is uh, pretty reasonably priced. I would say they're. I can probably get something that's better for a little bit cheaper, uh, but this is still, but that's, you know, I don't want to drink the same one every time. This is at least close, and I think it's it's worth buying if you're there. I wouldn't go out of my way to, um, to trade for it, but if I was at the brewery and I had a hankering for this style and I didn't have a bunch already in my cellar, or if I was there and they had it on tap, it would be one of the first things I would reach for because I generally just like this style more than a lot of other things. So I'm going to give this one a buy. Um, another good job from High Branch. Uh, like I said, if you're looking for the best barrel aged saison in the world, you're not going to get that. But if you want something really nice for the price, um, I would say this one fits the bill. So I think that's all I got in this one. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. And I look forward to doing the next one. Thanks.